Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and welcome to the Open Tunes News. For today's first story, it comes from Turtle Tooth, specifically Jeremy Bullock. And this is his channel. A link will be supplied to his channel in the video description below. If we click on videos, we can see that there's a video called New Brush Options in Open Tunes. Okay, we click on that. The first part of this video is going to be pretty similar to this video that I have on the screen right now, but it's coming from my point of view and I'm going to cover some topics that he doesn't quite cover but that's fine um let me go ahead and go here show more if you click on this you can go ahead and download otx the latest version of otx right here where it says otx 822 18 right here zip just click on that and then it'll start the download keep in mind otx Open Tunes Experimental is a portable version of Open Tunes, so there is no installation required. You just need to unzip it and work with that. So this is OTX right here, okay? Let me go ahead and show you some stuff, okay? So we have Raster Brush and Tunes Raster, okay? So these are two different levels with two different types of level types. Raster Brushes are kind of cool, you know. Of course, they have pressure sensitivity. So does Tunes Raster. Let me go ahead and create a new style right here. Let me just go ahead ahead. Let me make it red just for the sake of it. Okay, so they both have pressure sensitivity and if I go ahead and make a circle, okay, and then try to fill that using the fill brush, it says the current tool cannot be used on a raster level. Okay, well, let's go to the tunes raster level, okay? Let's uh, go ahead and draw out a circle. Let me go ahead and just give it a different fill, new style. Let's give it a green fill, okay? We can go ahead and fill that in. And at any point in time, if I wanted to change that to a purple fill, I can do so. I can change it to blue, uh, you know, sky blue, red, yellow. Let's stick with yellow. I can also change the color of the stroke as well uh, at any point in time. But I can't really do that with a... Uh, uh, raster level okay if I try changing the color I can do this all day and although it changes the color of the style it does not change the color on the stage so that can get kind of annoying over time the thing is is there are reasons why you would use a raster level there's there's a lot of different reasons and chief among them for the longest time has actually been the my paint brushes now all of the my paint brushes work for the raster level and there's some cool stuff really really unique ones that have a lot of variety and a lot of different things that you can do with them just crazy cool stuff now the thing is is tunes raster now actually is capable of doing all of that for the most part some of these brushes don't work and i'm not sure if they all will ever work but you know a good chunk of them do work and you know that's awesome I, i've wanted this for a while uh, and it's now available so it works and uh, the thing is is according to jeremy bullock uh turtle tooth there is some color fidelity that's that's slightly lost but i don't see that as being any reason to detract from using the my paint brushes with the tunes raster levels I, I love the fact that there's my paint integration with the tunes raster levels now but there is a, a few things that you need to be careful with for example if i pull out this knife brush in the my paint list and then i use a fill let me just go ahead and select a different style and fill wow that actually turned out looking okay but you can i actually see a little bit of overlap of yellow and green together let me go ahead and change this to a, a color that that'll conflict with it a little bit more you can actually see some weird pixelization but you know this is kind of common sense like if you're if you're going to be using anything that has to do with rasters and then you try to use a fill butt it up against a feathered stroke you can expect there to be some weirdness going on regardless of what the program is okay so these are the sorts of things that you need to be careful of like for example let me use one of these little speckly brushes real quick you don't want to create a speckly brush and then like plan down the road oh yeah I'm gonna draw this you know the circle out and then I'm gonna use the fill tool like you actually have to use your brain a little bit because otherwise you might run into issues like this of course this is common sense if you've ever used any graphics program that has to do with rasters you know just think strategically 
Just think on your toes like you normally do with a graphics program and the My Paintbrush integration with the Toons Raster levels will work for you just fine. So I'm, I'm really happy with this. I, I love everything about this. I'm happy with this. This is awesome. Let me show you something real quick here. So here I have some styles that don't have a My Paintbrush on them. It, it doesn't really matter if they do or not uh, to some extent. But here I've, I've covered this drop down menu on the new news in the past okay and th this is actually kind of cool because I'm able to say let, let me go ahead and draw this with this yellow brush okay and let me select pellet order now blue will draw underneath it because it's a higher number it's four yellow is three it's a lower number so it goes on top on the stacking order red will go on top of both of them so that's kind of cool right and then there's under all so now let's say I want yellow to go underneath blue which you know it went over earlier I can get it to do that if I want uh, red to go under all of them I can do the same thing I can also you know the overall I can this is like the default that everyone's used to now the thing is the reason why I mentioned this is because this drop-down list is somewhat new uh, with this functionality and such and so I don't really think this is part of anyone's regular workflow but as time develops I can totally see people using this quite a bit in the future and this is phenomenal I love this idea but the thing is is this is what happens when I create a new style with a style with a my paintbrush now look for draw order okay that that's the name of this drop down list okay okay I selected it notice how it disappeared there's nothing that says draw order so that functionality is now completely gone I will always draw over okay so you can see that, right? So there, there is some functionality that's lost when we use the My Paint brushes. It would be cool to see the draw order drop-down list uh, appear here at some later date. I guess that's a critique, but at, like I said, I, I'm. I'm happy with what I got here. This is awesome. So the next little bit is the shift and trace. Let me talk about that. Now I'm going to offer a little bit of a critique and I know that it's really easy for Orphan Last to come along and leave a critique on something. Uh, I, I understand I'm not a developer and you know, in order for a developer to introduce a new feature, sometimes it breaks multiple different features of the program and may cause a bunch of crashes. And so there's a lot of bug testing before a new feature gets released to the public and then Orphan Last comes along and says ah I wish it had this feature or that feature or whatever added on top of it and, and whatever and in just a few moments I, I've basically taken a dump on someone's uh, hard work and that's not the intent okay now uh, I am going to leave a little bit of critique here but it's primarily because of something that's extremely annoying okay so let me go ahead and draw a little bit of a character uh, a little cartoon character out real quick a nice big smiley face man and then let me draw uh, another frame where he's looking the other direction his eyes are kind of wide and his mouth is open okay so we got that we activate the shift and trace and we can see something going on here let's suppose this frame is all the way out here now in the past if we wanted to use shift and trace which you'd normally go view shift and trace in order to use it okay in the past, if we wanted to use shift and trace, what we've needed to do is have it sandwiched in between two fully drawn frames. So if, if this frame was all the way out here, what you'd wind up doing is grab this frame here and this frame here, and then you'd start sh doing your shift and trace work here. And then you'd have to, you know, move your frames back and just basically there's there's a lot of dancing with your with your frames and it can get really frustrating uh, but now with this new shift and trace feature we're able to just kind of create these things that look kind of like uh, onion skins let me reset my shift and traces real quick here and so th that's that's really cool let me edit shift and trace now this is where the critique comes in okay so I want to place this guy in the middle of these two poses and then I want to do the same thing with the other one but the thing is is it can be so difficult to actually select oh I've selected it wow I selected it that quick holy cow uh, that that usually never happens so now I can kind of draw out a little bit of an in-between here and let's see so kind of kind of treat them like 
onion skins to some extent. I kind of want to go halfway with everything in order for it to work properly. So now, you know, at this point, his mouth would probably start to open a little bit. Maybe a little bit of the those lines. What the heck happened? Okay. I think I'd be able to see his tongue there. And so now I'm able to, like, go in between. Let's, let's just reorganize this a little bit, just for convenience sake. Okay. Just so that I don't have to bore you guys with an animation. Okay. So now I can kind of find the shift and trace here. Kind of move them in between these two poses. Oh. Oh, yeah. So, right about here. And let me... Okay, so trying to shift... Okay, trying to grab my other shift and trace. But I'm... I'm what, what's happening is, as I'm double-clicking multiple times to try to get the other shift and trace, I'm, I'm running the placement of this current shift and trace. What do I have to do to get it? And it... Come on. Come on. So something... I feel like something... Uh, although this is something that I can work with, there's so much time wasted trying to select this other... Oh, did I... I think... Oh, well, let... What do I have to do? Ah, okay, I got the other one selected. But in... Okay, now, will I be able to select the first one? Okay, um... Let me see if I use my mouse. It, will that work? Okay, I... Oh, oh, I, I guess I already have it selected. But, okay. Okay, okay. The thing is, is if, if you wind up... <laughs> even with the mouse, though, like, I, I have this... I don't know. It... It seems like a double click is probably the wrong approach to do this. Like, it would be awesome if here we can have something that says, like, uh, other, un uh, other shift and trace skin or uh, something like that, where I can put it on, on my X, X sheet toolbar and click on it, and then it all automatically has me selecting the other skin, if that makes sense. I, I hope it does. Um, so now I just need to kind of in between here. Okay, so the mouth would be a little bit more shut. So let's go ahead and review the animation so far. Let me turn off my shift and trace and onion skin. Okay, so there's a little bit of a... Let, let me move this over here because I'm not going to finish this animation. But yeah, like, of course, it looks kind of like garbage, but you get the idea of what the shift and trace is used for and such like that. that that's my only critique, though. Being uh, Getting to this point where I'm able to not just grab that shift and trace, but easily with the stylus to be able to select the other shift and trace like what oh oh i got it okay 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 it seems like when they're further and further away from each other it gets way easy to select them or a lot easier i don't know what's happening now okay th but once they get closer it can get really difficult let me see what happens when i Try to get the other one. Okay, I still have the open mouth selected. Okay, what? Oh, the open... No, I still have the open mouth selected. Um, let me use my mouse. Double click. Did that get... Nope, open mouth still selected. Double click. Nope, mouth still selected. Double click, triple trip, click. What do... What? Mouth, open mouth is still selected. What do I have to do? See, that's, that's my main critique of shift and trace as it still stands, but, you know, as it was, 
earlier, before the, this new improvement to Shift and Trace, where we actually see something that resembles onion skins here, and uh, such like that, I, I, I could work with that. But now we're getting the added bonus of having this one, two, three onion skin sort of uh, look to the Shift and Trace. I'm so happy with that. That is so cool. And I can I can even move this all the way out here so I can address a shift and trace that's all the way out here on frame 10 if I wanted to. That is so cool. I'm so happy we got that. But uh, being able to select the other shift and trace uh, or switch in between the two shift and traces, that is the big frustration that has always existed with shift and trace. And if something can go uh, can, can happen on that front, that would be awesome. I don't know if there's plans to do that, but it, if there can be, it'd, it'd be much appreciated. Um, because uh, as you can see, just, just from this video uh, and my frustration with it, even still as it stands, it, it can be frustrating. I can still work with it. It's still very frustrating, time consuming, unnecessarily time consuming but I can still work with it. So once again, if you guys are interested in picking up your version of OTX, uh, feel free to click on the link in the video description below that goes to Turtle Tooth's channel, Jeremy Bullock's channel. Now I would like to apologize for just how lengthy that last story was. I just wanted to include the context of everything behind that critique, including the time that is involved in just trying to swap out which shift and trace that you happen to have and the type of frustration that might develop while trying to use shift and trace because of that. Again, I don't know if everything that's being involved in the improvements to the shift and trace feature, but yeah, that those are my two cents. That's just what I think. So the next story of the day is OpenTunes Marevna Edition 1.2.0.3 has released and it was published fairly recently by Constantine right here. So this is the latest version of OpenTunes Marevna. Now, let me go ahead and skip down to the bottom of this article because it's important that people understand that since it happens to be part of the 1.2.0 branch, it includes just a small set of fixes from the latest official version of OpenTunes 1.2.1. So there are fixes that are in this version that are not in the 1.2.1 branch of OpenTunes. So this isn't commercial software, it's open source. So a higher number doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be perfect for you. You just work with the version that works best for you. Okay, and then at the very tail end of this article, it also includes, in the near future, you can expect the release of Marevna Edition 1.2.1.1, which will include all features of the official OpenTunes 1.2.1 and a long due assistance feature. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with the assistance feature, this is something that I personally am really excited about. I, I started a bounty, kind of like a crowdsourcing campaign, kind of small scale, for $700 and everything like that, and we were able to meet that $700 goal. And this basically is the assistant tool from Krita being introduced into OpenTune so that you'll be able to have uh, perspective tools and rulers parallel rulers and a lot of really cool things integrated into OpenTune so that you don't necessarily have to move over to Photoshop or Krita or, or other programs in order to draw out your backgrounds. You can do it all in program. At least that's the hope of everything. And you can also do the same sort of curvilinear perspective that I have taught inside of my curvilinear perspective series where you draw out a panoramic image and you're able to have an, a character run a whole 180 degrees. So this is like you looking to your right shoulder, you looking straight ahead, and you looking to your left shoulder. So you could have the camera kind of consume just a portion of this right here so that you don't give away the entire wide-angled lens, and it, it'll actually look like the camera is actually swiveling. And that's, that's kind of awesome. That's something that I'm really hoping to get into open tunes so I I'm looking forward to that heck yeah but let me go ahead and focus on the present okay the present is 1.2.0.3 
Okay. We are happy to announce a new release of OpenTunes Marevna Edition. This version is an update to 1.2.0.x branch, which delivers the following fixes from our developer, Ivan Mohanan. Smooth sound playback and scrub for Linux operating system. Fixed crash when trying to process Tunes vector levels, PLI files, via CLI on Linux. We now provide portable versions for Windows users, which allows you to have a Marevna edition installed in parallel with other flavors of OpenTunes. So, just with these two fixes right here, we can see that there's a little bit of a target market. So if you happen to be using Linux, this might actually be a good version for you, especially, okay? And then moving on to the next bit, also this version includes the following fixes from official version of OpenTunes. Fixed crash when switching to fill tool on vector level, thanks to Sean Iwasawa. Fixed the artifacts of plastic tool on semi-transparent images, thanks to Shun Iwasawa. Fixed playback contour artifact of plastic tool, thanks to Shun Iwasawa. Fixed issue with shift dragging keyframes on the timeline, thanks to Menon Jong. Fixed issue with wrong cell highlighted when dragging from level strip to timeline, thanks to Menon Jong. So these two guys are having a heyday, doing a lot of good work. So ultimately, with this latest version of OpenTunes Marevna, it's not like you're getting a whole bunch of new features, but there's a lot of new bells and whistles under the hood, especially for those of you that happen to be using Linux. So just keep that in mind. Also, if you just want to try it out, you can always just get the portable version. You don't have to necessarily install it and have it replace your current 1.2.1 version, okay? A link to this story will be supplied in the video description below. And that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like, share, and subscribe. I know it was only two stories, but they're two really big stories that I've been wanting to cover for a little while now. If you'd like to get more notifications from me, feel free to click on the bell. And if you'd like to see more content from me, feel free to click on any of the videos appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.